Yo! It's NXT night. Actually, for me, it's night. And almost 24 hours ago was NXT. And for the first time in a while, I decide to shoot a video when it's not a day outside. Um, I'm risking it. Who knows? It might look like a, a little bit of a shit. But I don't know. Well, I'm gonna test it out. But anyway, we're here for N X. Sorry, we're here for N X T, and um, let's see how it went down. Before I go into any detail, I want to say that. I like NXT, uh, the current product, and I see that WWE starts focusing on NXT um, because at the end of the night we saw that John Cena is gonna join NXT, Paul Heyman is gonna join NXT. Uh, don't get confused, they're not gonna join join NXT, they're just gonna uh, be on NXT next week. John Cena is gonna be at Carmelo Hayes Corner, Paul Heyman is gonna be at Braun Breaker's Corner. Yay, it would have been super super nice if Roman Reigns was actually the person on Braun Breaker's end but it is what it is we see that WWE starts focusing on NXT which was something I was hoping for a long time now and it's cool to finally see it happening anyway the show started with Becky Lynch addressing her championship and basically all the contenders lining up for her. Roxanne Perez came out, Indy Hartwell came out and the Taya Valkyrie came out and uh, basically this is gonna be at the end of the night a triple threat who is gonna determine the next challenger for Becky Lynch after Becky Lynch faces Tegan Knox on Monday. Spoilers, Taya Valkyrie won and the story is kind of there because we saw that she's Irish and Becky is a great inspiration for her to start wrestling and um, I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen at Halloween Havoc and it's cool to see that this match is set from now and basically they can stack the history up, they can build it up even more and um, really excited to see how they're gonna build it even more. After that we had the strong brutes, <laughs> uh, basically Tyler Bate and Butch versus Gallus. The whole thing I can't really understand. We saw that Pete Dunne uh, or Butch got uh, sabotaged by uh, Joe Coffey or, you, or the whole Gallus on the Heritage Cup Championship match and I kind of don't understand why because Budge just won fair and square against Joe Coffey in order to earn that opportunity and after that Joe Coffey jumped him and, uh, and now they have a match and how is this whole thing what what is that whole thing leading up to I I, I thought that Budge is in NXT only for the Heritage Cup and now when the Heritage Cup chance is gone he's gonna go back to SmackDown don't get me wrong I like Budge being on NXT because I feel like he needs a little bit more development in order to be ready 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 for the main roster I kind of don't like the spin of him being in a brawling brutes I feel like he can be way stronger on his own being the bruiser weight being the beat done that I know personally but he is doing something now and I don't know what is that whole angle with Gallus and Joe Coffey and Tyler Bate but I guess we're gonna see in the following weeks I'm kind of excited to see it because it's a reference to the old days in the NXT UK that I never watched but I was always curious to see where these guys are coming from. After that we had a cute little segment between Ilya Dragunov, Trick Williams and after that Mellow joined and after that Dom joined. It was so cool, Trick cut a great promo against Dom and uh, some drama is happening with Ilya and uh, Trick and Mellow and um, also uh, Baron Corbin probably is the next contender in line for Ilya but the whole segment, the thing that bothered me and I, the thing that I expected was basically Dom manipulated Trick in a way that um, 
Carmelo Hayes wasn't in Trick's corner that night, but I expected Ilya to show up and help Trick against the Judgment Day. But I guess I, can, I will talk about that a little bit later, the whole Judgment Day thing and the Dom winning the championship or losing the championship, so stay tuned. Blair Davenport versus Gigi Dolan. I have nothing here. Like, it was a good match. Um, honestly, I am not a big fan of Gigi Dolan, but in this match, I was, I, I kind of started to be okay with her, and maybe with the following weeks, I'm, I'm gonna become a fan, I don't know. Um, but um, there's nothing much to add. It was just a match, Gigi Dolan won, and uh, basically she's winning for a second time as long as I understand and basically that is pissing off Blair Davenport and yeah so something is going on I'm gonna wait for a little bit of a development and maybe I, I can have a big opinion on it after that the women's breakout tournament started and um, they have mixed feelings always at the start of the tournament I'm super suspicious, I don't know any of the superstars, especially on the women's side, but one year back, Roxanne Perez won the tournament and now she's one of my favorite girls in a, on NXT. So let's just see how that whole shtick develops and maybe that whole tournament is gonna result in me having another favorite uh, girl wrestler. Who knows? After that, we had a weird one. JCJ and Tia Hale versus Ola Weissel and Electra Lopez. That whole thing started in the backstage like weeks ago. Basically, these four women were beefing with each other. But the strange thing is that uh, Andrew Chase and Duke Hudson, aka Chase U, are worried about Tia Hale and her new looks, which I agree with them. I don't like her new looks, uh, but they wanted to be in Tia Hale's corner tonight and JC Jane was the person who agreed with that. And I don't know if that whole thing leads to JC Jane joins, joining Chase U or Chase U crumbling or I don't know, but I'm excited to see where this whole thing is going because Duke Hudson being in the Chase U is weird. So. I'm not gonna be surprised if they make JC Jane join the Chase U in a long term. Like, with development, with the time, she's gonna see that they're the good guys, because she's communicating with Tia Hell, she's gonna see that everything is better on the good side, so, I don't know. We're gonna see what will happen there. Last but not least, the main event, the rematch. Trick Williams versus Dominic Mysterio. Long story short, Dominic retained his title, which is a weird one. I was expecting for them to spin another story. Let me explain. I was expecting the whole thing to be like this. Mommy warned Dominic if he doesn't want the championship to not bother coming back home, which means that if they spin the story of Trick Williams retaining the championship, Dominic would have been in real trouble in the Judgment Day, probably almost out in the Judgment Day. And there are a few scenarios. Maybe one of the scenarios is sending him to SmackDown for Dom to be the guy to be traded for Jay and for him to be trying to find his way back to the Judgment Day, but at the end, being the outcast, being so far from the Judgment Day, him giving up and after that, winning the title from his father and whenever he has a title, Judgment Day will be like, oh Dom, come back, we always love you, but Dom is gonna be like, nah, I'm a good guy now, flip you guys, and spin that whole angle. Or the other thing could be like him still being on Raw, but kind of kicked out of the Judgment Day, and maybe they're gonna replace him with JD McDonough, and Something like that. I, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a drama kind of situation in the Judgment Day. But uh, I guess the thing is now Trick and Melo are both without championships. And maybe Melo is going to be like, I told you to uh, keep an eye. I told you that I can help you and stuff like that. 
maybe they're gonna spin that angle uh, or maybe they're gonna send trick and mellow to smack down <laughs> to Bobby Lashley as I said a couple episodes ago because I kind of want to see it I kind of want to see Bobby Lashley Street Profits Trick and Mellow gang dominating everything and uh, but for that to happen Trick and Mellow will become heels and they're kind of working well as faces so I don't know um, the Judgment Day everyone is having a title now um, is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. They're really dominant. I like the Judgment Day from day one, from the day that Edge introduced it with Damian Priest only. And um, it's sad that Edge is at AEW now. We're not talking about it still, but tomorrow we're gonna talk about it. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're gonna see how this whole thing will go. To be fair, it's a little bit unpredictable for me that Dominic won championship and I don't know where that will lead to long term and I kind of see why Mustafa Ali was released because if that whole idea was for someone to win the championship from Dom and after that to lose it a few days after that this is a little bit of a disrespecting move but um, we'll see how everything will go excited for the future, excited for NBXT, and um, that's it for me guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'm gonna see you tomorrow for AEW Dynamite!